while I have you here, I know that you, you know, you just know the markets and you've been studying them for a long time. You worked uh, in trading at a trading desk for quite a, quite some time. Can you just give me a, a rundown on where you think we are now? I mean, I, yeah, I haven't heard you talk about it much since all of this shit went down. Yeah. I uh, would love to hear your take on so what's going on. I, I think that um, the, the, f- the Fed is forever in a catch-22. Mm-hmm. Um, they've been printing a shit ton of money, which has been um, causing a- massive asset inflation as well as now real goods and services. Um, CPI was 7.5% in January or February. We all know it's like 20% in terms of things we actually need. And, um, and, and they're starting to signal, or maybe they just did raise interest rates. Mm-hmm. It is the exact same thing, exact same. I always think it's like, does not matter what happens in the short, short term. Uh, short ter- the short term is important to be aware of, but what will happen in the long term is exactly what happened last time. Yeah. Uh, they will try to raise interest rates just as they did. They will try to unwind the balance sheet just as they did. And when they walk into a buzzsaw, which they will again, um, because they cannot take out the dollars that they put in, yeah. um, that they're going to have to print even more money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so where we're at right now is the Fed is in that, that phase of thinking that they can, quote, tighten. Uh, and, and there's no, you know, it's like, it's like the pulling the thread. You can't push the thread, you yeah. know. And then, like, trying to slowly unwind is not the same as... Uh, slowly moving more dollars in the system. Realistically, it's not slow. They've literally yeah. printed four point nine trillion dollars um, in two years, uh, and just last month they printed one hundred twenty billion. Insane. Yeah, so, so that's not really so that's, that's not slowly pulling on the thread, but like yeah. it does have an incremental impact. Yep, that is the gradually part. Um, but that when you start to tighten, everyone everyone runs for the door immediately. Like they don't wait for the Fed. Um, to to get to what they were planning to do twenty four months out, yeah, and and so when ev- it's like basically the, the tail wagging the dog, where the market's like, yeah, you're gonna try that, we're gonna go sell all of our credit, and then the credit markets are gonna try to collapse, and the Fed's gonna have to print a shit ton of money to buy the credit so that the credit system doesn't collapse, and either way, either scenario, it ends in Bitcoin, yep. it ends in people figuring out that. Uh, they cannot continue to go contribute value to others around them um, and, and value to the real world and have that value deteriorate rapidly. And the more they see that in front of their face at prices rapidly moving at the grocery store, at the gas station, um, it just it's a perfect storm for Bitcoin. So I think where we're at, they're trying to, quote, tighten. Uh, they are going to break some financial markets, credit markets. Uh, there will likely be some interim volatility, um, and and then uh, and then they'll have to print a lot more money. So the on air sign is not working. It's not. Yeah. We we need a lower it eye level. Be, yeah, yeah the it question, needs to be at eye level. The question I have though, <laughs> not about people interrupting us uh, sporadically, it's it's the balance sheet. Okay, so the Fed's balance sheet is like at nine trillion dollars right now. Or Eight point nine like five. So or how do they? So like. This is the thing that, that I was trying to explain to somebody, but you're, this is literally something that you're like professionally qualified to answer. How does, the be- how does the Fed actually unwind the balance sheet? Because there's no takers for that debt, right? There's no, so, like, so, I'm not buying. Well, so, so think, about, think about it this way. When they take the dollars out of the system, nothing changes about the amount of debt. Right. Um, and, and, and so the liabilities continuing to exist, the asset prices have to come down. Um, so, like, as an example, when they stop buying debt, the, the high-yield markets and the investment-grade credit markets start to sell off. So it doesn't matter if the Fed is going to raise base interest rates 25 basis points. The market gets ahead of them. Mm-hmm. The high-yield markets have, have uh, the, 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 like, bond value have, have been sold. as like the perception of, even before there are actually fewer dollars, mm-hmm. it's the perception of that people are selling high-yield credit, as an example. High-yield credit index is down... Five or six percent. The average duration of a high yield bond is like four or five years. Mm-hmm. So if you amortize five percent over four or five years, that's like four interest rate hikes that have just happened in two weeks, mm. right? Wow. So um, that that there are always buyers, but wow. the asset prices come down, uh, and they happen. They they come down very quickly because the market is not just acting on what's there today, but in what what the Fed is signaling it's going to do, and they're not they're not going to wait. Like in this game, 
of musical chairs, somebody can sit down first. And the same with Bitcoin. Like someone can choose to go first. And, and, uh, and so, um, but, but think about it as right now, I think this is the best way to think about it. There's 88 trillion, 88 to 89 trillion of debt. There's $9 trillion, mm-hmm. 8.95. When the, when the Fed starts taking that money out of the system, same number of liabilities, mm-hmm. but there's fewer dollars to go around and the market starts figuring out we're far more than, than $1 short. We're like 90% uh, too few dollars. And, and they start all running for the exit at the same time. And, they the, and the musical out. chairs is the exit. Yeah. Not necessarily like, oh, I'm so happy to be here before everybody else. It's like, yeah. I need to get the hell out of here before the right. building burns down. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's what's super interesting. I think like looking at the broad scope of things with all the world events that we have going on, it's like, oh, refugee money, Bitcoin. Uh, equity markets maybe being like over, overly inflated, vo- too volatile, Bitcoin. Um, you know, uh, deplatforming people, Bitcoin. Uh, censorship, uh, you know, yoinking people's bank accounts, freezing them, freezing them with no trial, Bitcoin. There's all these things that are like, B- Bitcoin is the answer to all these different questions. But some people, it's like so in their face and they're refusing it. They're like, no, that's too easy. They're, they don't understand the Occam's razor thing to say that the, the easiest solution or the most elegant solution is actually the one we should be pursuing or it's the best one or most likely to help. And I think that's where philosophically the people that get it, they're so entrenched in getting it that they know it. You know, it's like you can't shake somebody from that reality once they've seen it. Like, it's like, yeah, you can't like, unsee it. You can't unsee your, your naked grandma, you know, and effectively <laughs> that's what the balance sheet looks CJ. like in the debt. It's terrifying. <laughs> it's like, I don't. What, because it's something you, you don't want to, you can't unsee it once you've seen it. That's yeah. the whole point, you know? And it's like, but so you need to like really, like really cleanse your spirit, you know, after that. And that's how that, but that, to me, that's what, that's how sketchy and like scarred I am from looking at the macro picture right now. Cause it, everyone's like, you know, I had a congressional person text me today and her question was, Hey, do you think, uh, do you think we're headed for a recession? And I was like, how could we not be headed for a recession with all these events? We're headed for starvation if the wheat if the wheat doesn't get to people. Rice prices are going to shoot up. Almond flour is going to shoot up. Millet, corn, everything's going to shoot up. They're going to run out of they're going to run out of food to feed people in all these countries. Yo, that, that's, that's a, a good mess. point, uh, and this may be a good transition. Yesterday, I mean, these days are running again. Maybe maybe Wednesday, I went out and bought like a million satoshis worth of beef. Uh, from a rancher directly for Bitcoin. Okay. And we're going to go cook it for all of us. There's, you know, taking all the people who contributed today to, to go cook it up at, at Marty Ben's house. But, like, you're talking about that with, like, the rice and shit. Mm-hmm. It's like we're going orange pilling our cattle ranchers that yes. have ranches in the city. Yeah. Because, like, if the shit hits the fan, it's like, yeah, we got Bitcoin. We'll sell you. Because our, yeah. our money's yeah. good. Yeah. Our money's good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 